So my man, so so the death of Harry, you know, you've referenced this accident yeah. numerous times. Like, I mean, you've risen to prominence, you've become this physician, multiple practices, you know, crazy investment portfolio. You've done all these things that in the Western world would denote success. Correct. You've created this character called Harry. Right. Right? right. When Harry, in essence, is, you know, your success in the Western world. Remember, you have the best of both, the Correct. East and the West. But on one day, one random day, driving up, I think it was Broadway. Broadway. Yeah, in Knoxville, Tennessee, driving up Broadway. Yeah. Something happened, which in essence led to the true death of Harry. Correct. Talk about that, man. Well, uh, one pretty afternoon, Tuesday, about 3.30, shockingly, uh, I was finished with my patients in the office. That never happened. You know, mm -hmm. a typical day is more like 7.30 mm -hmm. in the evening. So I said, you know what? I'm going to just make use of this afternoon, go home and, you know, uh, play a little ping pong and uh, just relax. Mm -hmm. Something that never happened. Uh, so I'm all excited. Mm -hmm. Never, I mean, this was just like a gift. Mm -hmm. It landed in my lap and apparently not paying attention and uh, there was a guy on the other side who was going south on Broadway, mm -hmm. I'm going north, we both have green balls mm -hmm. and he makes a left turn in front of my car wow. and he had a big tractor trailer but attached behind his Dodge Dually pickup. Mm -hmm. uh, so his vehicle covered all three lanes mm. so it's not like I could change the lane and survive so uh, I couldn't help it I hit his tractor trailer nothing happened to his cab but everything happened to the car that I was driving in and my body mm. uh, <coughs> and um, well, that was that was uh, probably uh, one of the most uh, significant days of my life, and I was uh, ever since have been disabled officially. I've gone through multiple surgeries. My immediate surgery was obviously reconstruction of my left ankle, and. Um, uh, the doctors did a yeoman's job that evening at St. Mary's in the operating room. Now what is a yeoman's job? Well, yeoman's work. Mm -hmm. uh, that means it was like literally a miracle putting all those pieces of my ankle together. Wow. It was like a miraculous job. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, nonetheless, the damage was done. I had few other things, uh, you know, rib fractures and what have you, but those healed over weeks. But um, I come to realize that now from here on, I am going to be handicapped for the rest of my life. Mm. And, um, <clears throat> and I obviously couldn't go to the practice for several months. Uh, and this is where the transformation starts. Mm. Um, as, as, as you probably understand, post-traumatic disor stress disorder has many stages that a person has to go through to come to the other side. Mm. You know, the denial, the anger, the a lot, uh, the suppression, mm -hmm. the depression, and you know, it's a whole circle and that can last years mm -hmm. and it did it for me. But, and during that I had a lot of bitterness, a lot of anger, a lot of denial and you know, um, like anybody else. Mm -hmm. Like, why me, right? Why me? Mm -hmm. And that lasted for a number of years. And in the meantime, my practices all went down. And, um, and um, I, I, I just couldn't keep up with practices, with employees, with patients, with uh, managing of the financial pictures mm -hmm. and it was and two children who at that time were teenagers mm -hmm. and they got into 
you know, trouble uh, because of all the mayhem at home between me and Hannah and my health. Um, just a dramatic change in everything mm -hmm. in our lives, in our families. And uh, it was not easy, but that's why they say there is always a silver lining at the end of uh, the dark cloud. Absolutely. And uh, when that shows up, that's when you really come to find about your own self mm. as to who you are and what strengths are there within you. Mm -hmm. And they were there, but they had just been those layers that you layers mentioned earlier had covered them up and now was the time to cut free mm. to get out of those facades to get out of those false labels mm -hmm. and and turn the page and be the real Harish. Harish. you 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 mentioned that things fell apart at home and you know the practices fail and did you ever practice medicine again after this accident? Well, um, I did make an attempt in between my multiple surgeries to go back and revive the practice, which in internal medicine is not easy. You're mm -hmm. on call 24 seven. You know, people want accessibility mm -hmm. to their doctor. They don't want a doctor who's going to be gone for surgeries and post-op mm -hmm. and then, you know, complications and what have you. Because, understandably, when they're sick or their child is sick or their mom is having a stroke, they want their doctor. That's right. They don't want to find out that their doctor is sick himself, right? or sick mm -hmm. himself or recovering from whatever health issues he's got. So it was very difficult to stay true to myself and my patients. Mm -hmm. So I just finally made a decision that it would be in the best interest of my patients and my family too, mm -hmm. to just hang it up and let the chips fall where they may. Mm. Um, and uh, but you know, all these years later, I am just so glad that mm. it worked out the way it did. Even though at that time it didn't seem like a good thing, I lived with years with this. Why me? Mm -hmm. But today. When I say my prayers and meditate in the morning, I thank my maker for making me disabled. Mm. Because of all that I have received in the process. Mm. And that wouldn't have been possible if I had just stayed on that treadmill of financial and material success. Mm. The real me would still be buried inside of me only deeper mm. and harder to get there. Wow. But for my accident. But for my accident.